What's up, guys? Welcome to another video. This is Charlie Lin. Actually, today I didn't want to do a new video because I kind of felt my spirits were quite low, because the Bitcoin market and the, and the entire cryptocurrency market looks really terrible and ugly. Let's not say the Bitcoin has not recovered from the terrible crash to 19k to 20k. We also have the USDC, which is supposed to be a stablecoin, dropping by almost 20%. I know it's been recovering right now. By another 10%. I hope the same thing will not happen to USDT. There were two very important and terrible days that the miners, distributors, and miners here in China can never forget. That is 3:12 and 5:19, which were respectively March 12, 2020, and May 19, 2021. In March 12, 2020, the Bitcoin crashed by approximately 30% in a very short time. That was really terrible memory for anyone that knows about Bitcoin, and especially those people that do a little bit of mining. So what is happening today is really a little bit of reminiscent of what happened in March 12, 2020, because tomorrow is exactly March 12, 2023. Is the history going to repeat itself? <laughs> Let us see. And in the 19th of May 2021, it was the day when the Chinese government imposed a full ban on crypto mining. So that also caused the Bitcoin market and the entire cryptocurrency market to crash really badly. However, today's video is not just going to be about me whining about the market today. I'm still going to give you some general updates on some of the most popular ASIC miners in the market. Okay, the popular ASIC mining models that I would like to cover today includes the S19J Pro Plus, E9 Pro, KA3, K7, D9, and lastly HS3. Okay, before we talk about any of these popular ASIC mining models, let me pass you two messages from the owner of a top mining distribution company here in China. These two messages are about mining difficulty prediction, and the second message is about should we buy more coins or more miners today? Okay, starting with the mining difficulty prediction, the owner of this top miner distribution company thinks there are two factors that are adding to the mining difficulty. The first factor that's adding a lot of difficulty is, of course, the next halving that is coming in 2024. And of course, we know there are also some other having for with other coins like Litecoins or Dash coins. So he believes the hashing difficulty is going to increase by 100% when the having is happening with the Bitcoin mining. Okay, another factor that is causing the hashing difficulty to be really high is something that I didn't expect. He thinks there are one million miners that have not been switched on for mining. Because the owners of these miners don't have cheap electricity to keep these machines running, <laughs> and that is really shocking to me. And I don't know where he drew that number from. One million miners that are waiting to be switched on. That is a really formidable and scary number. Are you also one of the owners of the miners that are never switched on or have been switched off for a very long time? Let us hear about your experience in the comment section. The second passage this fine gentleman would like to pass to you is that should we buy more coins or more miners? His answer is we should buy more coins than miners. And I was really shocked. I mean, you are the owner of a top miner distribution company, and you don't think we should buy more miners? As an ASICs vendor myself, what should I tell to my customers and to those people that I've been selling a lot of miners to? What should I tell to them? Should I ask them to stop buying miners? I really don't know what I need to do. As a NASIC vendor, of course, I like to do business and I like to make money. However, I'm also a crypto mining YouTuber, so I think I'm really responsible for telling you what I think is probably more true, because this is exactly the meaning of my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is really about offering you really honest and objective observations that I draw from multiple miners and miner distributors that I meet across China and the world. And I hope that you can keep watching my channel because I'm really hoping to make some contribution to this great mining community. Okay, so these are just the two messages that I would like to pass along to you from somebody that I really respect and look up to. And I really would like to tell you this because I believe this gentleman is making a lot of sense. Anyway, this is not financial advice. If you like mining, you can keep mining. If you want to buy more coins, buy more coins. But I hope that eventually you'll be happy with your investment decisions. And maybe eventually, at the end of the day, no one is absolutely true about the future, or not even for the present. 
Okay, aside from passing you these two messages, which I think are really valuable, I would like to tell you my personal observation. Well, there's definitely no denying that today is a really bad time for mining, and mining is hardly profitable unless you have super cheap electricity or if you use some external help like hydro cooling or immersion cooling. However, my personal opinion is that the best of time to buy the miners and the best of time to do mining never overlap with each other. Unless in really bullish market, so I do think that today is a really terrible time to do any sort of mining if you don't have reasonable electricity rate. But I do think the pricing of the ASICs, especially for the Bitcoin miners, are perhaps at the bottom or at least very near to the bottom. Well, of course, I know the ups and downs with the ASICs miners' pricing is never exactly the same as the crypto market changes. Because the resale of the ASICs miners carries far more human factors than the pure cryptocurrency investment. I believe all the miner distributors and resellers, as long as they have any miners in stock, are doing their best to resist surrendering to the market. And I believe that is the main reason why the ASICs miner pricing has been relatively really stable. Well, of course, this analysis is more true of the Bitcoin miners than altcoin miners. The altcoin miners' pricing in the past few months and weeks has always been very volatile, especially for these top profitable ASIC miners, including the KA3, K7, or even L7. So my suggestion for buying any of the altcoin miners is that you have to make sure you, the price that you get is really right. And I really think it's okay to wait a little bit longer to pay for the future stock at a much better price. Because the pricing and the availability of these altcoin miners are really volatile, so do not let the miner distributors and resellers take advantage of your fear, your fear of missing out. Okay, enough with these general observations on the ASICs miners market and the crypto mining market. Let me now give you the general updates on these top popular ASICs miners as usual. The majority of the miners I'd like to talk to you about today are altcoin miners. And before we talk about any of them, I really would like to say the Bitmain company has changed the game for the altcoin mining. You still remember Goat Shell? You still remember the ridiculously priced KD6 Kadena miners? Well, those were terrible days. I do believe the Bitmain company has done a major contribution to the altcoin mining community. Well, at the same time, I cannot deny that the Bitmain company is probably launching too much inventories for their altcoin miners. That is causing the hashing difficulty to be so high. Anyway, I did ask one of the Bitmain salespeople why you guys didn't do altcoin miners before, and his answer for me is that they were not prepared. But I do believe they have always been prepared in terms of capability. I think the main thing they were not prepared for was to witness what's going to happen with the mining hashing difficulty. And today it is really coming. So maybe in this light, we should miss these companies like Goatshell, the smaller companies that are developing the altcoin miners. The price of their altcoin miners were really high, but at least the hashing difficulty was not really high because the supply of these machines was really scarce, and very few people were able to get a hold of them for mining. Anyway, whatever happened, happened. Maybe this is just the rule of jungle. Maybe what we really should do is to think in a different perspective. Didn't we say the cryptocurrency is decentralized? Maybe mining should also be decentralized. I know the Bitmain company today has possessed the full monopoly of all the crypto mining hardware, including Bitcoin miners and altcoin miners. But maybe in some way they are doing a great contribution to the democracy of the mining community by supplying numerous ASICs miners all over the market. They are giving everyone the opportunity to start mining. And maybe that is the benefit of the Bitmain company's monopoly over the market. And in the meantime, we cannot deny there are definitely a lot of people that are sacrificing their interests. So maybe this is like a chicken and egg question. This is a puzzle and a paradox that no one is able to solve. Okay, the ASIC miners that I would like to cover today includes the S19J Pro Plus, E9 Pro, KA3, K7, D9, and HS3. Starting with the S19J Pro Plus 118 or 122 terahash. Okay, with the cryptocurrency market crashing, the pricing of the S19J Pro Plus has also crashed, but of course not big time. In the official channel, if you placed any orders for the S19J Pro Plus 122 terahash on the Bitmain website, it's possible that you already have received your delivery. But if you place the order with the distributors or resellers, it's possible that they still have not get any of their deliveries made. 
And that is also the case with my orders. I also place the pre-orders with the distributors. Well, of course, the price is much better than the official price on the Bitmain website. Anyway, we believe the delivery of the S19J Pro Plus is going to be completed within this month of March. Aside from talking about the supply chain side of things, I think it would be also interesting to talk about some of the other models of the S19 series. First of all, the S19 XP 141 or 134 terahash. One of the Bitmain salespeople told me that it's very possible that the S19 XP is the only air cooling miner that people should buy. Because in the worst and darkest times for mining, maybe all these S19 series low hash rate models will be, have to be switched off because they cannot afford the bills. But maybe the only air cooling miner that can survive the darkness is S19 XP itself. And I was really shocked when I heard him saying that because personally, I've been selling primarily the S19 models, S19J Pro or S19 Pro models all between 80 terahash to 110 terahash. What I'm supposed to tell to the buyers of these miners? Anyway, when I shared his comment with one of my distributor friends, his answer for me is, hey, Charlie, don't be afraid. This Bitman salesperson is saying the only model that can survive is S19 XP, probably because the Bitman company is facing a really challenging task of clearing their inventory of the S19 XPs, which are ridiculously expensive. So what is your take on this? Will you buy more S19 XPs or average S19 models? Okay, I also would like to compare the model of S19J Pro Plus with these extremely low hash rate S19 models, including the hash rate versions from 86 terahash to 92 terahash. So what is the meaning of these low hash rate models? One of my distributor friends told me that the meaning of these extremely low hash rate S19 models is on overclocking and faster returns. Of course, everyone would like to get as high hash rate as possible, like those S19 XP models. But maybe the more important goal is to get your investment back. If you have reasonable electricity rate, or some of you guys may have free electricity, to go along with these low hash rate S19 models may be making sense. On a side note, overclocking is risky to your machines because it could damage the hardware. So whether to go for these S19 XPs or these extremely low hash rate S19 models is more of a personal choice. Eventually, the only person that's going to be responsible for your mining project is yourself. We hope that you can do your calculations and due diligence and homework really well before you make any decisions. Okay, the second miner I'd like to talk about today is the E9 Pro Ethereum Classic Miner. In the beginning of the pre-sale of the E9 Pro, there was a lot of hype with this machine because the price was really low. I believe this was like 1300 US dollars. That was extremely low. And later, in the World Digital Mining Summit organized by the Bitmain company in Singapore, there was an auction party for the E9 Pro. There was one minor distributor finally securing the deal at 4,000 US dollars. Now looking back at that price, that was really high. Well, of course, we know the final deal he could get for the E9 Pros could be 30% less than the auction price because we know he can use coupons. You can go back to the last video to see what the WDMS Singapore was about. So there has been a lot of hype with the E9 Pro from day one to the present day. However, I doubt many people are really buying it. Anyway, on the present day, the resale pricing of the E9 Pro has arrived at a controlled level and slightly different from the base model of E9 Pro 3680 mega hash. From the distributors, there's a variety of different hash rate versions for the E9 Pros from 3380 mega hash to 3780 mega hash with 100 mega hash different among one another. Okay, the third miner I would like to talk about today is the KA3 Kadena miner. So the main update for the KA3 Ant Miner is both its profitability and price have come down a lot. The highest price point for a spot order KA3 was 12 to 13K. And today it's back to approximately 8,000 US dollars. In terms of profitability, I can give you an example from one of my clients that owns one of the earliest KA3 Ant Miners. His experience has been on the first few days of having the KA3 ant miner for mining, he could generate approximately 60 KDAs per day. But today he could only make approximately 20 or less KDAs every day. This client's complaint over the reduced profitability of the KA3 goes to the manufacturer of the KA3. 
He believes the Bitmain company is releasing too many carry threes, causing the hashing difficulty to be so high and the profitability to be so miserable. Okay, so what can we learn from the case of the dramatic changes in the KA3 antminer? I believe the main lesson we can learn from here is that we can never assume the profitability figures and rankings on these websites like asigminervalue.com or word2mine.com are permanently true. The profitability figures and rankings of these ASIC miners on these websites are changing on daily basis or even on hourly basis. Over the past few days or weeks, you will find the top profitable ASIC miner is just among these models including L7, KA3, K7, D9, among others. So always think and calculate carefully before you are paying too much high price for any of these seemingly top profitable ASIC miners. Okay, the fourth miner I'd like to cover today is the K7 CKB miners. The main update for the K7 Eagle Song miner is that both its availability and price are too much volatile. Okay, so my suggestion for procuring the K7 CKB miners is that you have to make sure the price you get is right. I really believe it makes a lot of sense to wait for a few days or even a few weeks if you can pay for a much less price because eventually you will probably be shocked by the volatility of the altcoin miners market. You may be crying out at the end of the day, this is too much of a gamble. Okay, another important update for the K7 miner is that in the last month, there were some really favorable prices for both of the versions 63.5 terahash and 58 terahash. However, today, only the 63.5 terahash was delivered. We'll still have to wait for more days or even weeks for the 58 terahash to be delivered. I believe they're all going to be delivered within the month of March. Okay, the fifth end miner I'd like to cover today is the D9 Dashcoin miner. As I mentioned a bit earlier in the video, the profitability figures and rankings of the top ASIC miners on the website or asicminervalue.com are always changing. But D9 is one of them. And one of the major complaints about this D9 miner is the price is too high. The pre-sale prices or the original prices of all the altcoin miners under the Bateman company are all very good, including the KA3, K7, Enam Pro, HS3, but only D9 seems to be severely overpriced. And I have no idea why the Bateman company would like to price the D9 miner the highest. Maybe it's because the Bateman company does not want too many people to afford this miner, causing the hashing difficulty to be so high. Because we have already seen the cases with KA3 and K7. And we have seen the profitability over these most popular altcoin miners being reduced on daily basis. Well, this is only my speculation. Okay, the main update I'd like to give you for this D9 miner is that the pricing of this miner is much better with the distributors than originally from the Bitmain website. And this is a sharply different scenario than the case with KA3 and K7. However, so far, on my side, there has been very few increase about this miner. But maybe this suggests there's more opportunity with this miner? And in the meantime, very interestingly, very few people ask to buy the D9 miner. But some people have asked me really seriously about buying the D7 used Dashcoin miner. So far, I have found out the D7 used Dashcoin miner has not been easy to procure. And I also worry about the quality because it's a used miner. And it's very difficult to control the quality because even after shipping, it's possible the miner will be dead on arrival because I did learn a terrible lesson with another used miner called DR5. At that time, there was too much hype about this miner, even when they are used miners. And some clients find out the DR5 used miner is a piece of junk. Okay, the last miner I'd like to cover today is the HA3 handshake miner. I don't know much well about the handshake algorithm, but there's a very interesting live chat DJ Mine did on his channel with some people that seem to be understand a lot more about the handshake algorithm. Maybe you can go to his channel to check it out. Okay, my update for the H3 handshake miner is going to be very simple because it is coming back to the Bitmain website available for ordering for pretty much everyone. Right now it's available for ordering at a price of $2,500. Well, this is a little bit different than the past when the miners like KA3 and K7s were sold out immediately within like 20, 40, or one minute. Maybe the Bitmain company is doing a test to see how many end consumers would like to buy their miners. If this model becomes a success, which I believe is really likely going to be the case, 
The BitMEC company is able to cut out a lot of middlemen. Anyway, if you would like to get this miner, seize the time. The deadline of placing a deposit for this miner seems to be 9 p.m. Eastern Time, America. Okay, maybe this is pretty much about the updates I'd like to make this time. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thank you.